ရှင်ပါတယ်အငယ်ဆက်ရှစ်ကနေနဆယ်ဖြစ်ပါတယ်ဂျနာရိုဒီနေ့အာတက်တိခံမဲ့ဝိများမဲ့ဒီအာတော
Imagine students being summoned from classrooms with the sound of drums or metal striking metal, postponing their studies to gather under a tree in the yard so that you can hand them a new Little Testament Bible and tell them about Jesus. And before you leave, the head teacher of the school tells you, we are grateful that you have brought these New Testaments so that our children can have the first book to call their own. They will read them every day. I know that God must have sent you here today. Oh, how I have witnessed this in the countries of Africa. No, Gideons are not special people. We are people that have a special opportunity because we are Christian business professional men and their wives. We represent the Protestant evangelical churches worldwide. And we have open doors that no individual church or individual denomination may have. We have the opportunity to reach people for Christ that may never enter the door of any church to hear the gospel preached or taught. Every day at our international headquarters in Nashville, Tennessee, we received unsolicited letters from people whose lives and eternal destiny have been changed because they have received and read and believed one of these scriptures that we've had the privilege to place or distribute. Scriptures that churches like yours have provided with your financial contributions to this ministry. Letters come from people like the convicted murder who wrote from a prison cell to tell how he had been forgiven because he had given his heart to Jesus after reading that Bible in jail. Like the soldier from Tennessee who received the New Testament during his military induction and it carried it with him during times of combat. In that book, he found assurance to replace the uncertainty. Like the nurse in South Carolina who received a white New Testament from a Gideon Auxiliary and used it to bring comfort and peace to the heart of a dying patient to whom she was providing care. Like the young Fort Jackson, South Carolina military recruit who was shared, an offer, shared a scripture but she refused to offer to take it. I can do this on my own. I don't need it. However, as the training became too tough and she was failing, a buddy recruit shared her with her the promise of salvation and she came to know Christ as Savior. Like the man in North Carolina whose life had unraveled because of his wrong choices and he went to a motel room to end his misery but found a Bible on the nightstand. Instead of ending his life, he found a new life in Christ. Church, these are your testimonies. These people came to know Jesus as Savior because of people like you that provide contributions and prayer support to the Gideon ministry. For over 120 years, our single purpose has been to share the gospel with the world. And as members of churches like yours, Gideons visit congregations to let you know how God is using the seeds that are being sown around the world. And by God's hand and his provision, he has allowed the Gideon ministry to place and distribute over 2.6 billion copies of God's word around the world. So church, when you say you support missionaries, you can say that you support 255,000 missionaries around the world because Gideons and Auxiliary live in these countries. They know the customs, they know the language, and they know the lost. God is honoring your faithful support to his word to be shared around the world by continuing to open hearts to receive the gospel. We rejoice for each person that has accepted the gift of salvation this past year. While many of our ministry efforts were impacted by COVID-19, God was faithful to provide opportunities for members to share the word of witness and encourage people in facilities where we were able to visit. Worldwide, Gideon's International pursued 
targeted outreach efforts during COVID to reach first responders and educators. Members visited police precincts, hospitals, and school te teachers simply to offer a word of encouragement and also with men and the women in the front lines of the pandemic. Thank you for your support and continued prayer for God to touch the lives of the ministry of the Gideons International. Locally, the Gideons are here from all over the United States this week in, in New York City. We are going to all the boroughs and all the sidewalks of, of the schools and the colleges, to the fire stations and to the police stations all through New York City. Many of our first responders welcomed the gift of scriptures yesterday as, as we went to the police stations. In the past where they may have said, no, thank you, I'm good. Something has changed. Now they're very receptive to receiving God's word. And I think it is because of the pandemic and the lives lost. People are searching for hope, searching for truth, and have many questions. So pray this week earnestly as the Gideons, as we work out of the Marriott LaGuardia and we go to all over New York City sharing God's word. And we praise God for the open door to do so. I wish to share with you some scriptures or some testimonies from around the world. Hape grew up in a village in the country of Angola, Africa. He was 14 when he decided to hang himself. His parents were divorced, his stepmother was cruel to him, and eventually his father told him to leave. So Hape went to live with his real mo mother, but she considered him a needless burden and verbally abused him on a daily basis. One day, after accidentally killing one of the family's chickens, his mother flew into a rage and told him that of all her children, that he was the ugliest and that she hated him. That is when Hape decided no one loved him and that he should end his life. That night, as he prepared to commit suicide in the hut where he slept, he knelt by the bed first to pray. And as he was getting up, he knocked over a small table with some books on it. And he noticed a New Testament that he had received in school from the Gideons. He randomly opened it to Psalm 27 and read verse 10, which reads, When my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Stunned, all he could do was read that verse over and over again. Someone did love him. God, from that day forward, Hape never went anywhere without his New Testament, and he came to know Christ as Savior. I go to the witch doctor when I need spiritual help. These words came from Thelma as she was asked if she had any spiritual beliefs. And when she was asked if she had ever heard of Jesus, her answer was no. Thelma served as a motel manager in the village of Zavala, Mozambique, on the shores of the Indian Ocean. My Gideon brother and I were searching for accommodations and we were directed to this establishment. When we arrived there, we were met by Thelma and began negotiating the room cost. I recall Thelma was firm on the $14 a night fee, and we agreed. And as we continued our conversation, it led to a spiritual nature. She told us about the witch doctor. She was not much interested to hear about Jesus, but she did take a New Testament offered to her in her Portuguese language. The next morning at breakfast, Thelma approached us and said that she had read some of the little book she had some questions concerning what she had read. My Gideon brother Borge began sharing with her God's plan of salvation and reverently, and then myself knelt by the table there as she asked Jesus to save her. When we arrived back to the motel later that evening, Thelma approached us again to say that she had some friends that were also interested to hear the story of Jesus. 
There we met Richard, Victoria, and Mary. And as the Holy Spirit led, they too asked Jesus to become Lord of their lives. I want to know the truth. What is the truth? This was a reply from Richard when he was offered a New Testament. Richard was a delivery driver and was unloading his truck in Midtown Manhattan. Richard said there's a Jewish synagogue, there's a mosque down the street, as well as a Catholic church over here. There's also a Christian church close by. They say they're all, they all say that there is a God, but if they all recognize the same God, how come they can't get along? I just want to know the truth. Well, my friend Grady was not really expecting this kind of reply, but God was. Most people in the streets of New York City sometimes will not make eye contact with you. So you have to get in their way and offer them a free gift. Would you like a free copy of God's Word? Grady opened the back of this testament in the front. He said, truth, truth. Let's see what it says about truth right in the front. It opened up to John 14, verse 6, page 196. And he read it aloud. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Richard said, and he looked at Grady and he said, did Jesus really say that? He said, yes. Let's see what else it says. Psalm 25, 5, page 487. He gave it to Richard, and Richard read, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and for you I await all day long. Salvation? Richard questioned. Grady then shared what Jesus did for him on the cross, and then turned to page 167. As we all know so well, for God so loved the world and read that perfect plan of salvation that is found in the back page. Richard and Grady knelt on the sidewalk in Midtown, Manhattan, and Richard gave his heart to Jesus. Back in Aiken, where I am from, Aiken, South Carolina, I was at a jewelry store. I was looking for, right before Christmas uh, for my wife for that, that little perfect piece of jewelry. Nikki was assisting me at the jewelry counter and I commented on the, on the, little, gro the little gold cross that she had hanging from a necklace around her neck. And she replied, well, thank you. I said, how nice it looks. She said, thank you. She says, I'm a believer. And I asked her, I said, how so? And she went on to tell me that she was going through a difficult time in her life as a college freshman and that she found help from reading a green little New Testament that she had received on the local college campus in my town. She went on to tell me that she trusted Christ as her Savior and now she was growing in her faith. And then Nikki asked me this question. How about you? Do you know Jesus? I said, yes, I do. And thank you for sharing him with me. See, church, that's how it's supposed to work. We're supposed to go and tell. We're supposed to tell about that joy that we have in our hearts. For Jesus Christ. We are to be his witnesses. Just like Nikki. Was being such a witness to me. I or another Gideon. Could have been the, the, the person. That handed, them, handed Nikki. That little green testament. That wasn't important. But it is a blessing to see. How God is, 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 is 
blessing the seeds that are being sown around the world. Not other, in other countries and in other lands, but even in our own hometown. 22-year-old Nadia served as a night clerk in Hotel, Hotel Juana Lemos in Zibito, Mozambique. The Wi-Fi connection was strongest in the small lobby, so I spent some time there while I was uh, in that country. Nadia was very friendly and spoke English well. That, that country speaks Portuguese. So I, I spent some time with Nadia practice, practicing my pronunciation of some of the Portuguese uh, names. And when the subject of our conversation changed to spiritual beliefs, Nadia shared with me that she wor worshipped at a universal church of the kingdom of God. Through conversation, I learned that her church, that the sacrifice of Jesus alone was not sufficient for salvation. So taking my, my testament and sharing Romans 10, 9 and 11 with Nadia, and uh, it opened the door to begin reading the back pages of the testament when she expressed correctly what the scripture meant to her. And I asked her if she would like to receive Jesus as her true Lord and Savior. She said yes. And as we knelt at the little table there, Nadia prayed asking Jesus to forgive her of her sins and come into her life. And as we looked up, while tears were dripping from Nadia's chin, there was a big smile on her face. Nadia was invited to attend a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. And I praise God for what He is doing in that country as the door is wide open to Jesus as Savior. Romans 10.17 tells us, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. How will they know unless we tell them? So how will God use His Holy Word? Maybe a small school in Africa will be reached allowing the children to receive that first book. Maybe teachers there will receive a full Bible for their desk allowing them to teach the students for many years. Maybe police, fire, and medical personnel will be reached with the gospel. Who knows? God knows. So in a world where people are searching for peace, searching for hope and answers, thank you church for providing the gift that has eternal impact on people's lives. It's a fact that in some international countries such as those in the continent of Africa when a young school child receives a testament like this they will take it home. A brother and a sister will read it with them. The mother and father will read it by candlelight at night in that little hut. And the whole family will come to Christ as Savior. So the investment of $1.20 can reach as many as a family of five for Christ. So church, family, I, I ask for your prayers. Pray for three things for the Gideon ministry. Pray that we'll have a steady flow of funds to purchase Bibles and Testaments to meet the ever-increasing demands we receive for God's Word around the world. Second, pray that we'll have more men and their wives to join the Gideons to meet the growing need for distributing God's Word around the world. And finally, pray for those adults and children to receive God's Word will not only open the Scriptures, but will open their hearts to Christ as their Savior. A hotel Bible like this that maybe you've seen in the hotel has the opportunity to reach over 10,000 persons during its lifetime in a hotel room. Every single dollar that you contribute will use to purchase and produce and ship Bibles and Testaments. Right here in New York, in Johannesburg, South Africa, in your native country, and around the world. So thank you for your financial gifts, for your prayer support, 
for men here in your congregation that serve in this great ministry. Thank you for them. Thank you for the love of God's word. Pastor, thank you for your strong endorsement of the Gideon ministry. And may God bless you. And in closing, I have just one little video. And it is a thank you to you from the children of Africa. In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe Generation, when all is dark, you help us see there is only one salvation. We believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ We believe in the Holy Spirit And He's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that He conquered death We believe in the resurrection And He's come